Hey guys, today we're gonna learn how to proof moonshine using science. So the obvious choice to proof your alcohol would be to use an alcohol hydrometer. And these hydrometers work on a principle known as specific gravity, which in this case is the density of a substance compared to the density of water. Ethanol, which is a type of alcohol that we drink, has a density of 789 grams per liter, whereas water has a density of 1000 grams per liter. And since the hydrometer is a glass tube with the weight on the bottom of it, it will bob up and down depending on the density of a substance. Now, if you got the good stuff, it's going to be a lot less dense, meaning that the hydrometer is going to sink down a lot more. But if you bought the cheap well, then it's going to float up a lot higher. Now, while a hydrometer is the most accurate way to measure alcohol content, an experienced moonshiner will use a shake test to proof their alcohol. The general rule of thumb is that the larger the bubbles and the quicker they disappear, the higher proof the alcohol is. And this is due to two factors. The first factor is surface tension. Water, as you may know, has a really high surface tension, and this is thanks to all those hydrogen bonds. If you start dripping water and moonshine onto pennies, we can see that the penny will hold a lot more water than moonshine before it starts to collapse. You see, whenever there are water bubbles, all those water molecules are being pulled together and they collapse before they can get that big. The second factor is viscosity. Water is a lot more viscous than alcohol, meaning that it takes longer for the bubbles to settle out than it would with alcohol. Now, this is a lot more prevalent with something like honey, but it still does make a noticeable difference. Expert moonshiners using this technique can proof their alcohol almost as accurately as a hydrometer. But even if you're not a master shiner, you can still proof your alcohol by mixing what some would argue are the two best things in the world, black powder and alcohol. Let's go outside for this one. Also, I think this is a good point to say that I don't in any way condone the illegal production, sale, or consumption of alcohol in any way, shape, or form. And also, please don't try to proof your alcohol using black powder. It's really not a smart idea. Just don't try this at home. Back in the 1800s, British soldiers needed a way to accurately test how much alcohol was in their liquor. And they found out that if they mixed gunpowder with liquor that was too watered down, then it simply would not ignite. But if they mixed it with gunpowder that was above 57% alcohol, then it would light up just fine. And back then, the proof scale was directly tied to the gunpowder test. If it passed the gunpowder test, then it was considered of proof, and it was over 100 proof which back then was more like 57% alcohol, even though nowadays the proof scale is tied directly to alcohol by volume. So here we have two samples of black powder. This one is soaked with 40% vodka, and this one is soaked with 75% moonshine. So as we can see, if you put the blowtorch in the vodka one, you see that it won't ignite even if we hold the blowtorch to it for a while. But if you put the blowtorch to the moonshine one, you see that it pretty much lights up right away. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed creating this video, then please leave a like or subscribe. Thanks. This is water, by the way. <laughs>